I'm joined by Leitrim manager Terry Hyland to talk about the Ulster football final between his native Cavan and Donegal. Terry, can you just tell me first off, what's the rivalry like between the two counties? Is it heated or are they friendly, friendly rivals in Ulster? And be friendly, to be fair, you know what I mean? It's always neighbouring counties anywhere you get rivalry, you know, if it's Cavan from Man and Cavan, Monaghan, or maybe on the Mead border, Longford not so much, but they're the three, they would be the three big ones in Cavan, you know what I mean? There's a Once you have a gap county in between, the rivalry is not the same. Yeah, and just to, in, in terms of coming into this and reflecting on last year's Ulster final, which Donegal won well enough, do you, do you feel like you're being cast as massive out or underdogs here? Well, should look at, I suppose to be fair, uh, you know, you know, Cavan has slipped into Division 3 and uh, Donegal retained Division 1 in the National League, so I mean, there is that little bit of a gap there, naturally enough, and that's over a consistent level of football. Uh, Cavan have done quite well in their own into the Ulster final. They played, they played some good football, they played some not so good football. Uh, they probably showed an awful lot of spirit and heart to get them where they are, more so than anything else. Yeah, because, you know, after falling well behind against Monaghan and down, it did look fairly desperate at a couple of, uh, couple of stages. And to win those games the way they did, I mean, that's a great sign of a team. And is it, is it anything to do with Mickey, Mickey Graham's influence? Well, so Mickey's the manager and he's his management team and of course uh, I'm sure if you ask Mickey the same question he said well he'd prefer not to be doing that he'd prefer to have an even uh, an even game that they won't put themselves into some problems at half time and that will be the problem going forward to Sunday I mean if, if they do that against a, a Donegal you probably won't see a way back for them no matter how well they play in the second half mm. but uh, you know this is where and he, he referenced himself after the game but down that uh, you know he felt there was going to come a day when they wouldn't resurrect themselves yeah, did you expect Cavan to be in an Ulster final this year, given how the league had gone and getting relegated again? Well, I did, and again, you know, I suppose I look at it more from a pragmatic point of view, is and you look at the draw and who you've got in it, and I felt that if we got over down with every chance of getting to an Ulster final, and we did, you know, uh, or sorry, over Monaghan in the first round, more so than down, I felt that we had every chance, and then when when uh, uh, the draw was come round and we got to who we got, you know. Uh, it left it open enough, left it all 50-50 games. People would have always fancied this to beat Antrim. The Down game again, people would have said it was 50-50. To be honest with you, I would have felt that. I felt that Down again coming from Division 3, and where we were two years ago coming from Division 1, we should have had a little bit more experience, and it probably did show on the day. Yeah, and I'm not sure if you saw them this week, but Mickey Graham was asked about Michael Murphy getting protection, you know, in light of the game against Armagh, and a bit of, I suppose, we call it, call it sledging broadly anyway but he goes maybe maybe we need protection from Michael Murphy ourselves it seems the big teams get the big calls do they get the easier calls probably at times the referee know all these players by first names I'll just read a little bit more because it is interesting mm. and he goes the top teams are probably playing regularly with the top referees and they probably know them a lot better at times they seem to be able to communicate stuff to referees whereas if we ask a question we're basically told to go away teams do train for that getting referees on site getting umpires on site some big calls can be made and influence a game. Donegal are a top team. They're not up there for nothing. It's not all about football. Maybe we're naive in Cavan because we haven't been dining at the top table for a long time. We need to get a wee bit cuter down here. Now, as, a, as the current Leitrim manager and former Cavan manager, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I'd have to agree with a bit of what he says as regards the top teams. To be fair, you know, when we get towards the finals and current finals and whatever it is, the better referees do roll out in those. If you're playing in the lower divisions of the league, and I don't mean this in a bad way, I mean you probably get less experienced referees rather than better referees, maybe that's a better way to put it. And and, and the more experienced referees do uh, referee the games with, with, with the bigger teams more. So therefore they are on more first name basis with them. And uh, I always felt that any referee that negotiates with players on the pitch and talks to them and tells them it's what happened because you know, you can go up to catch a ball and somebody beside you can create a free and referee will blow against you and he doesn't explain it and only antagonises people and, you know, that freedom of information or free flow of information is probably very, very good for players especially. And I would say he's right in that, uh, in certainly in the lower divisions, you don't get that communication and it could be just inexperienced referees starting out as well and maybe they're a little bit more fearful about communicating with players in case maybe they say something wrong or they're taken up on it but I think communication between the referee and all officials and the players is, is very welcome. So so on a day like this it, it can actually be worth a score or two can it? Well a score or two is probably stretching a little bit and therefore you're saying that the, the, the referee or the umpire or the linesman can be influenced which is not fair to say. 
Yeah. And when at the end of the day, the official calls it as he sees it, and he can do that. But the player may not see it the same way that the official sees it. So a little late, a little explanation actually goes along with a certain no problem there. Yeah, and I, I'm not sure if you got a chance to see Donny Gall's win over Armagh, but the way they turned over the kick out, their pace, power, they seem to have it every which way. They have, well, you know, they've been developing that for the last number of years, and Cavan played them, I think it was two years ago in Malibu Fay, and, uh, you know, you had young Lang and all them young guys were only coming in at that stage, and to be fair, then, you could see on that day, there were a lot of good young footballers coming on, and, uh, you know, those guys have developed physically as well as, and skill-wise as well since that, so they're a formidable outfit at the moment. Yeah, and it's, like, even Padder Morgan coming up, like you've mentioned uh, Michael Langan, Kieran Thompson, like, and that performance down in Tralee in the league just before the championship started seems to have springboarded him. That's before you get to Michael Murphy and Jamie Brennan and Paddy McBearty's only coming in off the bench. How, how do Cavan go about trying to stop that? Well, I'm sure uh, Mickey and the lads have come up their own way doing it. I think Cameron will probably minimum have to play a sweeper type system. Someone who's going to push out on runners coming in, but also protect the full back line because in the game today, they have conceded a lot of goal chances and they're going to have to stop them. Yeah. And I suppose that's the first thing they have to do. They're probably going to have to go man to man with a lot of the players. And, uh, you know, Michael Murphy, you know, he's one of these guys, a lot of counties will put maybe a guy and a half to him or maybe sometimes two guys to him and Michael is quite content with that to let other players play he got back in his own half back line he pulled one or two fellas and he allowed other players who were good footballers to run at you and create holes so I think with the Michael Murphy one I think it's just one person to man up and down it's all going to be about the matchups as well and how can we get the matchups right and uh, they got it right in the second half against down. They probably didn't get it right in the first half. And it's always going to be about getting that right from from from, from the get go because if they don't, they're going to be on top. Mm. And do, is there any area that you think Kevin can get a bit of joy in this game? I would say again, uh, possibly the regard full back line. I think that mm. there may be a uh, perceived weakness there, especially under a high ball. Uh, you know, we have Thomas Galley and the young Conor Madden did well last when he came in. We probably have a few guys we can fit there that maybe can hurt them a little bit in that area. Yeah. But uh, again, it's about the quality of the ball going in as well. It's not a matter of putting a six for four guy in and hoofing ball in on top of him, but then it becomes 50 50. It's a matter of how they play it. Yeah, yeah. And Brendan Devenny was saying it was one of the best performances he'd seen in a long time from any team against uh, Armagh. He said after the water break, Donegal hit them for 1-7 to a point. Best 15 minutes I've seen a team play in five or six years. It was out of this world. Do you think that Donegal are up in that tier beside Dublin at this stage? Well, apart from uh, possibly me, oh, at the moment, that's what's left in it. You know, I mean, Donegal have been, you know, I mean, have showed that they have, uh, have the players on the start from 15, but they also show, as you said, they have the backup coming in to back it up. Mm. And uh, whether it's a year or two too soon for them, I can't comment on that because... It, to be honest with you, the younger players are the guys who are taking all the problems at the moment. And okay, you know, you have Michael Murphy who's playing still quite, playing quite well, Neil McGee, and a few of those other guys. But you have some young fellas coming in from the sidelines. And you can see Paddy McBrady probably might even start and say on Sunday. And, you know, the guy who's an all star, a guy who's, you know, kick points in all angles in Crow Park. And, you know, they seem to be functioning quite well as a team. And maybe. Not, I'm not saying that Paddy would be any difference whether they had to play as a team unit, but they seem to be playing actually better as a team unit at the moment rather than they're more, they're more some of their part, all their parts than one individual, you know? Yeah, and, and what are your thoughts on the job that Mickey Graham has done? You know, he came in from Mulnyot then, he was probably double jobbing at the start of his first season because he took them to a Leinster club title. And then, you know, it, there's been two relegations, but two Ulster finals at the same time. Do you think he's, he's changed much even? Well, look, you, you don't. You, you know, in the end of the day, he's only in two years, or you said maybe eighteen months, and you're not going to change that much that quickly. Funny enough, in football, you come in and you have to adapt to the players and the passing that have been there. If you need to change it, it takes a little bit of change to do, and that takes a little bit of time. I, look, I suppose they would be disappointed with our league campaign. There's no point in saying otherwise. Um, it, we fought long and hard to get to Division One back in 2016, and uh, like, we've been up. And down and up and down unfortunately we've stepped back into division three and we would hurt a little bit from that because we are in also finals unfortunately last year we didn't win if we win this one it's great and you can't win a final and you actually get to it but for a lot of counties bar four provincial titles and an all-Ireland title 
you're only looking at five teams at a 32 win and something. So I think probably league status is very important to everybody else bound the teams who win those competitions. And that hasn't varied that much in Ulster in the last 20 years. When you look at Johnny Gall's record, Tyrone, Armagh taking a few out of it and that sort of stuff. It hasn't really gone round to the rest of the people. So, you know, we would hurt a little bit from losing our league status. I think that um, it makes our teams more competitive. But in saying that, to be fair to him, he's got to do us the finals, which nobody else could manage in that period before that. Yeah, and if, if Kevin are to pull off a shock here, is it going to be something like Grode McKiernan having like the biggest day of his career or something like that? I think it's a day of uh, Kevin's probably lesser player for the one for better world partners playing the best game they've ever played and also the better players playing better than they've ever played before more. I think that's what it's going to need. But I think if they can get a combination of the 15 guys up in the game, maybe 15, 20%, and not allowing Donegal to get a run on them, not allowing uh, maybe Donegal to get two goals only in the fourth half and keep it tight. And after that, you know, to be fair, they will have the confidence from coming behind in the last couple of championship matches. And they did it in league games. They did it in Westmead and in Kingsman Brefley early in the year. They've done that before in the finished down in games. But the bigger guys just don't allow you. They just keep the scoreboards ticking over when you get that little bit of a gap in you. They can't allow that gap to come. Yeah, so if you were to put your neck on the line, are you kind of fearing that it's going to be done Gall? Well, I wouldn't fear it. I'd probably judge it as a game of football. And I suppose if you were, you know, all you have to do is look at the bookies, and the bookies seldom get it wrong. They've done Gall a strong favourite to win it. And it's been true. Everybody else in Ireland has it the same, you know what I mean? My heart would love to see Cameron win it, but my head probably says done Gall because we have to look at it from a pragmatic point of view and if, you know, if you're involved in football and you're a manager or you're a pundit or whatever it is you have to see what you see in front of you so you know what I mean yeah. it took, it, to me it would look like done again yeah that's that's fair enough so you obviously played against Mayo recently as Leitrim manager losing by 2 15 to 10 points if I remember correctly where are they at do you reckon I mean they had just been relegated from the, the league albeit that was a narrow defeat to Tyrone after previously hammering Galway and now they're through to a, a Connacht final, or sorry, they've won Connacht after beating Ross Common and also Galway again. But that was 14 points to 13. Probably not the most impressive uh, performance that they've produced this year. Where do you think they're at? Well, again, if you look at it, uh, again, the group is worked in the favour to be in the All Ireland final. Uh, you know, and that's no disrespect to Cork Tipperary. They look at yeah, their league stands, where they have been, where they have been in championship for the last 10 years. Now, Cork probably have an ability, if they get over Tipperary, to, to, to maybe hurt them, they're big mobile units and they can move the ball pretty fast. Uh, Mayo James has changed around a lot, he's a lot of debutants, he's a lot of new people in. Um, they will probably perform quite well against the Leitrims of this world and anybody else coming through. You know, there's probably struggled at long periods last week when they should have probably put Galway away. And, and they didn't, and Galway were coming in on the back of probably have had no championship football, so they were a wee bit rusty, and Galway did get pushed them at the end of the game. Um, but I would see them getting through an All-Ireland final. Then, of course, we look at the other side, whoever comes out of Ulster and whoever comes out of Leinster to bring it on the other side. Um, it may be a year or two soon for these young guns coming in. Uh, that might seem strange for the length of time that me have been around. I think uh, he has a lot of good young footballers coming on. It may be a year or two too soon for them. It's about how he can keep the mix and the blend together. I do think um, knockout football suits team like Mayo and uh, even the Donegal, it, more so than a Dublin or teams who are capable of grinding out results week after week after week, that if they get caught in one result, um, they'll, they'll not get caught in the second one. I think it may all have that ability that say, well, okay, every day is an all Ireland day, we have to go out and do a day in this one. I think that suits them, that suits them mentality. Uh, and for Mayo to go all the way, do you think that there's enough scores in that team? I mean, I look sometimes at the inside line and I see Killian O'Connor in there and Aidan O'Shea in there, and like they're obviously both really good players, but can they turn and get a goal in the same way that Conor Callahan at Croke Park, you know, in the biggest games against the best teams? So they're a really good team, but I just wonder sometimes, do they have the killers in there? But sometimes, and you've noticed this probably in games, and it depends on the setup. Not that many in full forward lines has actually turned around and get goals because uh, they win a ball, run away from the goal, and they lay on an off and somebody shooting through. So it's how they can get scoring power coming in after wing half hours of the midfielders who are taking ball at pace and, and going by defenders. Because inside the players, Killian Connor kicks his freeze, he'll loop around the back and he'll kick a point maybe from 35, 40 metres out. 
and that type of play. Um, but you, you're probably right. Is who is going to like, um Killian's brother probably is Fitzgerald's probably a, a better chance of scoring a goal maybe than Killian has in one sense because of the angle runs that he's makes. So it's how uh, Mayo can develop that. And that is but go back we we'll go back to even to the also finally go back to Johnny Gall. Johnny Gall seen their players who can come rolling at your hand from distance out the field and hurt you. And probably Mayo, that's why I'm back to the point, is that younger players are taking up their half forward lines and their half back lines and they may just not have the experience to do that yet. Yeah, and, and these younger players for Mayo, Owen McLaughlin, Rhino Donahue, Oshin Mullen and so on, do you think you do think it's a year or two soon for them? Like because even even um, Owen McLaughlin going wing back and Lee Keegan going back, is that kind of a reflection of Lee Keegan's a little bit older and will let a younger guy do those raids up and try and get the scores? Yes, and maybe it's a case of that they're looking at the full back line and seeing how do we tighten this up. Mm. And possibly then we come to a Dublin game or a Donegal game or a Cork game when we have to give Lee Keegan a particular role and you can say, well, okay, you can mark X, Y, and Z because now they'll pull you into the other end of the pitch which yeah. gives you opportunity. So it's all about balance and getting the matchups of the day and I think, uh, I think James is just looking at creating options as much as Evan is playing Lee Keegan back then. Yeah, and, and what about Paddy Durkin? Is he up at the... Or, there can't be too many better footballers than him at the moment. No, well, again... Uh, power and pace but you know when you get to all out in semi-finals and finals you might see there's many better footballers but you can up a footballer does it's good yeah <laughs> so that's all we have that battle on the day yeah 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 that's true and you've mentioned Cork and Tip there uh, once or twice in the Munster final this weekend you would have come up against both of them um, in Division 3 this year wouldn't you we would have yes Tipperary beat us by two points and uh, Cork beat us pretty well pretty well and we played them in the first round of the league and uh I think with two minutes over the half time was a one point game and we could see the one one or one two before that and, 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 and the whistle and that virtually was game over. Look at Cork and never or not or never should have been in division three. You know what I mean? They're a minimum in division two and they should be you know, looking at the size of the county and the population and playing population, they should be consistently in division one. Mm-hmm. They had a very good uh, super race last year, if you remember, the Russian Dublin for sixty, sixty five minutes. So they have the players, they have the ability, um, when you judge it against uh, Kerry the other day, it's very hard to know. What, what would you like about them is the home game against Kerry. You know, Kerry just couldn't get away from them. You know, again, if you analyse it and you're pragmatic about it, Kerry probably should have won that match, but they didn't keep them all across the pan. Mm. And, you know, we talk about all the different statistics and matchups and turnovers and everything, and I always say the biggest statistic is in the corner of most grounds is called the scoreboard. Yeah. So if, you don't, if you're not ahead of the scoreboard, it doesn't matter about everything else. I'm just trying to you know, build up a bit of hope for myself as a tip man coming into this game. And I'm thinking about all the long kickouts that might happen as they did in the semi-final because of the bad weather and you don't want to risk going short and all that. And I'm thinking, if Stephen O'Brien is fully fit and able to play the game and if Colin O'Reardon is and Michael Quinlevin comes out around midfield and they start winning primary possession. Um, so can you help me out and tell me how tip could, could possibly win this one? <laughs> well, it's really incredible that again they like, will have to perform at the top of their game. I think the other two main score getters to have. Um, I, I would fear that the Cork are just physically too strong for them at this time. This, the Tipperary team of five years ago, possibly yes. I think some of the boys maybe stepped a little bit across. Um, you know, I mean, you just don't know because again you go back to the weather factor and and, and, and weather conditions and you know there's a lot of leveling out there but. We seen Dublin again leash last week. We could see, you know, even Mayo playing a leash in the in, in, in the first round of Connacht. Most teams can live with, with the, the better conditioned teams for 45, 50 minutes, but it's a conditioning factor after that, especially this time of the year. And do you think do you give Mead any chance of an upset in the Leinster final against Dublin? Well, Mead have improved. Uh, I don't think that they're good enough to beat Dublin yet. I think they'll give them a good rattle. I think that uh, psychologically we need all the step up for the Dublin game. You know, they've put away a lot of goals in the last couple of games. Uh, have they improved enough to beat Dublin? I'm probably not. Mm, yeah, it's probably probably a bridge too far. And just a final question then. You're, you've, uh, you're staying on with Leitrim for a third season next year. How long of a break do you give the players before you get back to it? Well, again, we're waiting on... on, on but we don't even know when the National League is starting. There were reports out this morning that it may start mid-February now. I'm talking about maybe regionalised. I'm only going by what I'm reading in the, in, in, in the news lines. Uh, the Hobbit Championship, all I have been finished by the end of July. So suddenly a week ago, 
People are talking about mid-March for the league at the end of March. I know no one but championship now to this morning are talking about mid-February and playing a condensed league, maybe split into regional areas. So instead of 18, 14, and top two playing, probably playing out. I don't know what the format is, but um, they're probably playing by time, and that's what they're at at the minute. And see where we go with the COVID, see what the vaccine does for us when it's available. You know, in the end of the day, if the vaccine is available to all the players, and they can, they can get inoculated against it. That means then it takes an awful lot of pressure off how you can train and what you can do. And I suppose the financial side to it. And to run national leagues and run county teams, it costs money. And they are probably looking as when you can get the punters through the gate. So it's probably a, a mix of everything in there. And all that can change quite quickly depending on what a vaccine does. Yeah. Was it actually tough running a county team considering COVID and all that this year? Or did it run smoothly enough for you? Well, it didn't run well for us, as you know, we had to uh, pull out the down game. Uh, yeah. You see, I suppose, it's, what you, it's how you do it and where, where you go. Well. We went by the national health lines, we had close contacts with guys who were down, we did a full squad test. And, you know, and this is, you know, people are asking me about how numbers are rising these days and everybody's doing what they're doing. We had two guys who were totally asymptomatic, hadn't a uh, symptom kind before testing or after testing, they never showed anything. And people say, ah, oh, yes, but you must have had a sore throat, you must have had a cough, absolutely nothing. So it's just one of those uh, diseases is very, very hard to stop when it's so many people can be asymptomatic with. Mm-hmm. And uh, we did our full squad test. I don't know many other counties did that, but we felt that um, it was the fairest thing to do because these players are working. They're going home to some of them to elderly parents, grandparents, maybe siblings that maybe not so healthy or carrying some little underlying conditions and you have to be more careful of that and you know i'm not as young and going home maybe as i was 20 years ago and i probably look at all sides of it i know you would have had some pundits and some managers says we should play irrespective which is fine but at the end of the day I, as I said to one guy, I says, have you known anybody who's been very ill with this? And he said, no. Have you known anybody who has lost their life? And he said, no. Well, I says, I've known both. And he says, when you see that, you look at things in a different perspective. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this is about, we see it with the guys with the soccer at the moment. We see it in rugby. And the GAA has been relatively lucky, bar, as somebody says, the weaker counties, which you know what I mean. But at the end of the day, you know, Sligo, Donegal had a little bit of all the way early on. Arma had a few problems with it. I think down a little bit trouble with it. Or says like the four or five counties has had issues with it. Mm. Uh, the bigger counties, um, you know, can line out a team tomorrow, and you'll see a name or two maybe missing of a team sheet or of a out of a twenty six, and you'll say, oh yeah, well he must be picked up a little injured, but we don't know why they're missing. And then two weeks later they can be back, or whatever it is. So. Yeah. Uh, they're really lucky that the competition ran as far as they have and ran off so well. And to be fair to county boards and managers and staff and, and, and probably all the medical staff within those county boards that have done a Trojan job in doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, I really appreciate you joining me, Terry, and sure, enjoy the Ulster final at the weekend. <laughs> Thanks, Shane.